Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Thorgeir. In my last video, we created this monstrosity right here. This is Donald Joe, the president of the internet. Uh, if you want to check out that video, it's right over there, linked in the card. Basically, I did is I merged Donald Trump and Joe Biden into one single persona. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you three different ways of paintifying this character. And what I mean by paintifying is basically make this look like it was painted. Starting off with the simplest way of doing this, but probably the most time consuming way. Now the app that I'm using is Procreate on the iPad, but you know, this tool is available on Photoshop and you know, bunch of different software. So you could probably find a smudge tool in the image manipulation tool that you use. So the process is very, very simple. First, we need to flatten the image. So to do that, we go into the wrench icon right there. We're going to do add, we're going to do copy canvas, then three fingers down, paste. Now we have basically a flat image that we can work on, right? So if I hide all of the other layers, now this is just a single flat image. The next thing we do is we select a brush that sort of drags the pixels around a little bit. And the brush that I'm using for this is Dr. Oil Slick. It's available in the brush pack linked in the description. Dr. Oil Slick is a typical sort of oil painting brush. It picks up the colors around them and blends them with the stroke that you're actively uh, making, right? So you can track a stroke around like so. And it's just uh, very nice for this sort of work. Basically, what we do is we select the appropriate brush size. We don't want anything too big because that's just going to, you know, mess out his face like this. Uh, but we don't want something too small because that is going to take absolutely forever. I mean, it probably looks best if you do it like this, uh, but you know, you can imagine this would probably take you a better part of an entire day to complete, but you definitely can. But I'm going to select a sort of medium sized brush. So the technique is we want to do sort of short, but very deliberate strokes, you know, try to follow the contours of the face. So you see there's a muscle right there and we want to follow that muscle. Uh, if there's a contour right there, we want to follow that contour. And the basic idea is just sort of smudging out the pixels, not making it look like a photo, but making it look more like a painting. Now I'm going to spend, um, let's say, 10 minutes on doing this sort of thing. And we'll see how far I made it in 10 minutes, starting right now. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Thorgeir, this isn't real art. Don't teach people how to do this. This is copying. This is, uh, this is cheap, right? Well, not everything needs to be about pure art, right? Maybe you just want to, you know, make your mom happy and make her into a painting. You just want to do something simple. <laughs> Maybe you want to give someone a gift for Christmas or uh, any holiday. I think that's a nice gesture. I made you into a painting, mom. Oh, thanks. Now, the trickiest part about this is getting the lines right. You know, there are so many sort of fine lines in a person's face. And if those lines are lost, it just gets a little bit too bland, right? If I just sort of smudge this all out, like, oh. There's definitely something missing, you know, you see these nice little shadows over there. It's just nice, normal shadows. Uh, this is all missing if you just blend everything super smooth together. So uh, when you see these sort of shadows, just make sure to select an appropriate brush and try to maintain them. Just do short little strokes. All right, so that was 12 minutes of me just going absolutely bananas with the smudge tool. And here are the results. So we see I wasn't able to do the eyes. There's a too much detail uh, for me to <laughs> try to do that very, very quickly. So I left the eyes out. But, you know, with uh, a small enough brush, you could definitely, definitely do the eyes. It just, you know, you have to be a little bit more careful with uh, the colors because 
if you have it a little bit too large there you know you lose just so much detail from the eyes so smaller brush for smaller details but you get the idea this is a very easy way to do this but it just takes a lot of time now what i'm going to show you now is how to do this uh, with a lot less work it's not going to look exactly like this but it's going to achieve a similar looking ish effect to do that we need to head over to the pc and uh, go ahead and check out photoshop so to send this over to photoshop what i'm going to do is i'm going to tap on the rents icon right there do share image psd that's the photoshop format and i'm going to go into more right here let's find photoshop in this list there we go photoshop is going to send it over and now we have it open up in photoshop if i close this down right now and open my pc this should now show up on the cloud documents in my pc all right so now we're in the pc and here we see the document and now we're opening it up here we see the image and if we click on this layer right there we can see uh, the work that we did in procreate now let's take a look at the first way of automatically paintifying an image so if we go to effects over here and click on stylize we can do oil paint it's supposed to replicate the texture of oil paint but i don't know this isn't fooling anyone really I don't know exactly what it's doing. It seems to be following some sort of logic, but but it just looks like random hair on his face or something like that. It's just weird. It's a weird effect. I don't know, but if you're looking for exactly this kind of effect, I mean, it's, a, it's an option that you can consider. Of course, you could play around with all of these settings to dial in, you know, some sort of effect that might work for you, but I'm not gonna dwell too long on that. What I'm going to show you, however, is the third method of paintifying your image. And this one is really, really cool. So if we click on the effects over here and go to neural filters, this is a recent addition to Photoshop. And basically what this does is it uses machine learning in order to style transfer an artwork onto your image. So it uses a pre-existing artwork as the style and then applies that style to your image this is now just simply implemented directly in photoshop if you click on this show more button right over here we can see all the different styles that you can choose from and it's simply a matter of clicking on a style and it applies it to the image so if you click on starry night for example this takes a few seconds and here we go it has now applied it to the image uh, click on this one, Vincent Van Gogh. Not perfect, but you can adjust the parameters there, the style, strength, the brush size, and things like that. You can preserve the color, so we'll just um, use the texture, but use the colors from the existing image. So this is more of what I'm thinking about, because I don't want to recolor the image. I want to use the existing colors, but I'm just looking for that paint effect, like it was a painting. So let me play around with the settings a little bit, see if I can find something that works. So there we go. Sort of looks like a painting, right? I mean, we're still in Photoshop, of course. We can make all sorts of adjustments if we want. We can separate the layers uh, with selection tools. We can smudge things out. We can, um, you know, change the colors. We can change the contrast, whatever we want, right? So this is the power of having AI implemented directly in your design tools. Uh, just think we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this in the future. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you excited for the future of AI in design and art tools? Do you think AI is going to take over art? If so, well, why? And if not, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious to hear what you think about that. And if you're really curious too, and you want to learn new skills, well, lucky for you, because Skillshare is the sponsor of today's episode. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers its members access to a huge list of classes for drawing, composition, illustration, AI, and so much more. Lately, I've been working on my storytelling skills for an upcoming series on this channel. So uh, I've been sitting around in my sofa learning about storytelling from Keith Yamashita in his course, Storytelling for Leaders, How to Craft Stories That Matter. What I liked about Keith's course was how he broke down the process of writing a story into its core elements and then built the story piece by piece. 
each stage was supplemented by learning resources, which I could easily copy over to my iPad to follow along with. Now, Skillshare is made for learning. There are no ads and they launch new interesting classes all the time. I highly recommend that you go ahead and check out some of their amazing classes. And the best part, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium membership. So go ahead and check that out. And thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, then please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out the channel a lot and keeps you in the loop whenever there's a new video posted. If you use Procreate and you would like to try out some interesting, cool looking brushes, then go ahead and check out www.artanddesign.tv. I'm constantly posting new types of brushes there. And one of my favorite at the moment is the Impossible Brush Pack. I just launched an update to that pack and uh, highly recommend go ahead and check that out on artanddesign.tv. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have an awesome day. Bye bye.